Okay, hello guys. I'm so glad to have you here once again today. And we are going to be looking at 0 times 0 for more functions, more nested loops, projects. I believe your coding journey is going smoothly and you are excited doing all of the projects one after the other. And you are learning too. You are picking up something daily as you engage in one project or the other. And of course, we are here to give the you know do the little assistance to you know help you in this journey all right as we could together so uh, like we'll be doing we are going to work on this project and we're going to take the necessary step first going looking at the quiz questions then we jump around to create the file and again we do the basic what you need we give you the explanation behind why we have what we had and again we are going to be looking through all of the tasks all of the tasks for this for this project okay um paraventure you haven't done any of the tasks or the quiz questions hey sit back just look through um look, watch through this video and it's going to give you the the guide you need for to complete your project please if you find our videos useful please kindly like and subscribe and share all, all right to help um others as we uh, the others as well so we are going to start the quiz okay before that um these are resources take your time to look through the resources for guide all right to so that it will help you pick one or two things okay in your journey all right again for the requirements um check always check it out time and again to see that um you are doing the right thing you are doing the right thing okay so um for the quiz that is where we are going to start from i will do some explanation because it's very important you know some of these things behind it because particularly this one is very important you understand what is happening behind the scene so for this question what is the output of the following piece of code um initialize uh declared um i variable then initialize i to negative nine then we we gave a condition in this loop as long as i is less than zero print f this minus nine so how do we go about this for this we are having two negative here we declared a variable and initialize it to a negative figure and then we are printing the negative value so two negative values uh, is going to give us a positive result all right two negative value is going to give us a positive result and again this is i plus plus we are incrementing right and the initial value minus again i said because it's too negative it's going to be positive so we are printing from nine all right printing from nine till we get to i i less than zero okay i less than zero so that will be from 9 to 1. So this will be the result. Take note, it is positive. That is why we have, it is too negative given positive. If this was a positive, if this was just I, then this would have been our answer. I believe you understand that. So move to the next one. For this, we said, what is the output of the following piece of code? All right. Again, we declared uh, an integer, then initialize it to 9, then but here we are having the loop. This is a while loop too, but we are having a decrement, a decrement, i minus minus, which is, which is what? A decrement. And again, notice it's post decrement. Okay. So what is the printf? What is the printf value for this? What is the printf value for this? So here I want you to understand first that, understand the difference between, uh, Pre uh, decrement and post decrement for pre decrement means that the value of the operator is decremented first and then it's assigned all right and it's printed assigned in the in the um, function or program while for post decrement means that the operator the operand is first used in the expression and then the decrement operation is performed um, later all right that's just the difference so for what we have here this is this will be the result for this why is that because for i 
uh, yi minus minus, the first value will not be 9. I know you'll be thinking, oh, why not this? Or oh, maybe this. The first value will not be 9. Reason be that, because the while loop condition decrement the value of i before it is printed. So i is decremented before it is printed. That is how um, the decrement work. That is how the decrement um, printer work. So that this will be the result. All right, this will be the result. So uh, we move to the next one. What is the return value of the following function? Okay, this is the function name, returning void. So we have int and we are using a for loop for i equals zero and i less than say i plus plus print. So we are returning i. Okay, we are returning i. So we, um, we are not returning the, this is not the printf, we are returning i. So for this, the 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 val the, the total value of i will be 10. Don't know if you get because i is zero, so you can't zero one two three four five six seven eight nine because i is less than ten. So the total value is going to be what is going to be ten because we are returning i. All right, we are returning i. So if it was printed this, then we will count from zero to nine. So we are returning i. So our value is ten. So I move to the next one. What is the output of the following piece of code? This is it, and set initialize i equals zero, and while i is less than ten, then printf i modular two. So we are looking at modular, modular. All right, then i plus plus. So I'm going to look through this. Um, I have a, I prepared this so that you can look through this. This is the solution for that task. Okay, this is the question, and zero modular two is zero. One modular. So modular is talking about the remainder, right, guys? It's talking about the remainder. You, if you are, if you divide it, the remainder is um the modular. So this is you could look through it, and at the end of the day, it will, this will give you. You pick the answers, all right, to give you this. Okay, so that is it for this uh particular task. So this is the value, all right. So we move to the next one quickly. What is the return value of the following function? So this is the function, and we have printf, then return 98. Again, I want you to know that the printf function print formatted text to the console. All right, it helps output formatted text. Why the return statement is used to exit the function and return a value to, to the calling code. That's what return does. So here they ask us the value, what is the return value? So the return value will be 98 and not the printf, which is 12. So the printf value, so the return value is 98. That's how we got it. So question five, again, what is the output of the following piece of code? All right, so we have this. We are using a for loop. The loop integrate through this statement, i, as long as i is equal to 48, and as long as i is less than 58, that's i equals 48, i, you know, is 57, that's less than 58, increment i plus plus. Then printf, this is the character value as the format specifier, then the value of i. So what is this? Well, here what we are talking about because of this is is what the ANSI values all right the ANSI values of 48 to 57 48 to 57 okay um for ANSI values you could okay this is it you could just look through um this website and it's going to give you that the ANSI values okay looking at that so the ANSI value of 48 is zero down to what to 57 all right so to look through that here and this is it all right so this is your answer here right here so i move to the next one quickly what is the output of the following piece of code we are using a for loop we initialize we declared variable i initialize it to be zero as long as i is less than 10 i plus plus then printf 
i multiplied by 2 okay so here i is 0 so the first value will be i 0 times 2 which is 0 the next one will be i 1 times 2 which is 2 i 2 times 2 4 i 3 times 2 6 i 4 times 2 8 so this is it this is what we have here all right so that is that so move to the next one what's the output of the piece following piece of code this is it initialize i we initialize uh, we declared i initialize it to be zero why we use it while loop as long as i is less than 10 increment separator i divide 2 this is not modular this divide this time all right so in division we take um here i if i is um, zero i divide zero divide two would be zero if i is what one one divide two would be one if i is two two divide two divide two would be one so the difference uh, between modular and normal division is that for modular you take the remainder as your value for division for normal division you take the value of the result so 2 divide 2 is 1 that's what we have here then if i is 3 3 divide 2 is 1 is yes 3 divide 2 is 1 remainder 1 we are not talking we are not using the remainder then if i is 4 4 divide 2 is 2 so this will be your result this will be your result so we move to the next one of question 8 what is the output of the following piece of code Initialize, we declared i, initialize it to be 9, while minus minus i. So this is again a decrement. But this time, I'll show you the difference between this and the first one we looked at. Printf percentage d i. So if you look at the first one, we, the first question we looked at, 8 question 1, you see that it's synonymous to what we have. But... The one we looked at earlier for question one, this is a post decrement. That was what I was trying to explain for post decrement. All right. The value, we, we uh, the value that we are going to get, okay, um, is first is going to start with it because it's going to decrement before it starts um, using the, the value. Okay. So it's going to start from it. Then, then the value is going to run up till it gets to what it gets to zero for this for this because it is what it is post decrement it is post decrement all right but if you look at the the the, the other one the last question here what we have here is pre decrement because of that then it's going to print it seven six five four is going to print eight values eight values why because it decrements first before printing so it's going to be one short of the original um number which is what nine so that is that um you could look through the resources you are given if you find or you could drop your question in the comment of this uh, video and i'll give you if I will explain further. So I'll just go ahead and close this off and we are going to move into the next page, which of course you know is solving the individual tax. So I'll just go ahead, let me restore this down and okay. I just go ahead and get my web time. So here um, you see the okay, let me try this. Okay, so we do see the see the root. All right, to be sure we are in the root directory. So the next thing we are going to do right about now is to go ahead and going to the our repo or als low level github repo then uh, 
let me pick it from here just follow along while we do this so i do see the uh, i'll do that of cd i'll paste that if i hit enter we are in our low level repo repository now so the next thing we are going to create this directory zero times zero four so i'll pick this from here so how do you create a directory of course you use the mkdir mkdir make directory then in the name of the directory you are creating so if i paste this this is going to throw an error all right because i've created this directory so if i hit enter it's going to of course directory already exists but for you you are going to it's not going to show this error because you are creating already have that directory so since i have that already so what am i going to do i'm going to see the into that so if i list you discover that i have that directory zero times zero four all right it's already here that's why that error so what i'll need to do is to see the into that directory so you after creating you it will go successfully then you're going to do cd into that directory so we are in we are in zero times zero four um re, uh, directory now so after that what do we do next we go ahead to create our main dot our readme file our readme file that's the first file we are going to create our readme file so how do we do that we go ahead and do vi readme dot md i'm going to be using vi no read me dot md so vi read me dot md i'll hit enter then it'll take me to vi terminal and i have just this few statements um the basic requirement is that you don't have an empty read me file okay just ensure it's not empty but mm, don't put jungle then just put something meaningful all right here i put in the 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 name of the project and said i'm learning more from so please make your own different just customize it to your own self so that you won't have the same um file so i don't expect you to copy exactly what is here you know you can adjust and make your own file different so after you put in that then you can do your escape column wq all right you write down quit so after that you see we now have a readme.md file we now have a readme.md file so after that the next file we are going to create is the main.h file which is this main.h file that's the next file we are going to create all right we are going to create the main.h file so how do i do that i do vi main.h so vi main.h it takes me to my uh, vi and my vi editor and it's going to create that file okay so this is it i have my uh, main.h file here and i have this at the header files all right then these are the the functions the functions i used in my in the project in the, the file all the files i created then i used an end if to end um the file so here you have all the functions that's for pucha or that's for its offer its digits mall multiply print numbers print most numbers small numbers then print line and diagonal and the rest of them so what you need to do is just go ahead and ensure you have all of this in your main dot h because um this main dot h then in other individual files we are going to be including the main dot h all right these are the prototype that will help uh, run other files all right we have in this project so once you are done you can do your escape you do column wq all right you write or save and quit so you get out of there you have your readme file now and the main dot h file so that is the first basics you need to start working on each of the tasks so after i've done that then we can go ahead to start creating each of the files so the first one we'll create right now is zero is upper is upper dot c and what are we going to do there it's a write a function that checks 
write a function that checks for uppercase character. Okay? Write a function that checks for uppercase character. And again, you are giving the prototype. So, like in the main.h, these are the prototype you are going to that are there. So this is the prototype for this first file. I believe if you go to the next one. Again, there's a prototype. So it is all this prototype we copied and put in the main.h file. It's just as simple as that. So you see, there are prototypes. So you put all of this, all of that prototype in all of the files. You put them together, and that will make up your main.h file. Okay, your main.h file. So here, I'm going to have our zero is upper.c file. So I'll go ahead and pick this up. From here, I'll do vi into that file to create that file. So if I do like that, um, yes, I have this. So I'll go ahead, guys, to do basic explanation for what is here. For what is here, I will explain that code. I'll, I'll go ahead and explain this, all right? So it's start mode and you put this into it. So what do we have here? Here we have majorly three parts of this code that are here. The first part is called the header. All right, the header. Then this part, this is the function header. This is the function, this part is the function documentation. All right, you have documentation. Of course, the documentation has to follow Betty style. It is it has to follow the Betty style. So that's the documentation. Then this is our our main function. Okay, our main function. Okay. So this has the function declaration. We are defining the function here, which have the function declaration. Then the statements. And the return value. All right. So basically, that is what we have here. That is what we have here. So that is what we have here. So here, we said include main.h. We have the prototype of this file now main.h. So we are including main.h so that if we are trying to run this file, it's going to fetch the prototype from our main.h to execute this file and like i said earlier this is the betty style this is uh, the doc uh, function documentation which follows the betty style then this is our function definition okay this is our function definition So this is the definition function def function def So this is the function definition so here what is happening here we are declaring we are this our function name is upper okay function name is upper then this is our return data type we are returning an integer as the data type of this function so after this function run it's going to return an integer then here is where we pass argument this year we pass argument in this function here we have we are passing an argument just one argument and that is c so that argument is going to return what an integer all right an integer so basically this is what we have here then we have the if statement we have if statement take note of what we are trying to achieve here take note of what we are tr trying to achieve here so write a function that checks for uppercase character prototype return one if c is uppercase return zero otherwise so again again they gave you c as the what we are going to use you know as um the the variable all right they give you a c as the variable name you are supposed to use here 
Alright, so you are not at liberty to choose that they already gave that to you. Then you are returning one if C is uppercase and return zero otherwise. That is if it is not uppercase, you return zero. So this statement says if C is greater than or equal to A, the value A, the alphabet A, and this is the AND operator. The AND operator. If C is greater than or equal to A, and c is less than or equal to z all right all caps all right uppercase uppercase right is less than or equal to z all right so c have to be between the value if c is greater than or equal to a okay the between the value a and z all right have to be between that range then return one s we are used we used an s statement here s return zero all right s return zero so that is what we have here so if this program run is going to look at this statement check print a as the first value value run look through looks through this um, st uh, statement then if it if you discover that the next one is B, uppercase B, then it keep it prints one. Then, if after at the end of the day the value changes to lowercase or something, then it's going to return zero. So that is what is happening here. That is what is happening here. And again, you should know that the return. This return shows that our program have been successfully executed. All right, successfully executed. All right, then we have that. So at the end of the day, the program is going to run and check if the value of C is uppercase within uppercase A to Z. All right. If it is otherwise, it's going to return zero. So that is what we have here. That is what we have here. So you could do that. You could go ahead and put that. And again, where can you make changes to? Here, you could. Your of course, you must not put everything we have here. Here, I said is uppercase prog check for uppercase character. So I want you to. You can change this to program which is now unique to your own that means you have your 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 file will not be different which will not uh proper um uh kimba and all of that your file will be different you could change the uh, uh prog allows check allows to check for uppercase to remove character so ensure you do that so that your file will not be exactly as what is here I believe you understand what I'm trying to, what I'm talking about. So once you are done, you could do your escape. Do your escape, colon, WQ, you save and quit. All right. So you have that first file created. So how do you, how do you check if, so let me, the, the provided, most times they provide you with a test file to test locally before you push if what you have done is correct. So that is why we have this section. So if you are just seeing this, know that this section is the test, the test file to test locally in your seminar if the what you have done is correct. So let's just walk you through how you do that test. To, check, to do that test, what you need to do, you have to create this file in your terminal. So this is the file name, zero main.c. And even if you don't push, that file is just a test file. You must not push it. Though even if you push it, it will not be used. Um, it will not matter. But even if you don't, it's not going to count. It's just a test file. So I'll do vi. 
main dot c zero main dot c all right yes what we have here this is exactly if you look at it this from here include main dot h up to this closing curly braces that is the file exactly what you have here nothing was added that is a test file so you copy you create it zero main dot vi zero main dot c and you come back here and you put it here exactly the way it is all right so you just copy it and paste it here it's a test file to test if what you've done in the previous file is correct so after you've done that you can go ahead and do your escape colon wq with so you created your test file then how do you test you test this program using this first file you created using the gcc code so you come here again you pick your gcc code pick your code here then you come back to your terminal and you put that in all right if i hit enter it's going to wait for some time if you don't if there's an error it's going to show that there's an error but if there is none it's going to return like this once it returns like this then if you if you ls if you list ls and hit enter you are going to see a file created in green so if that is created it means that you you your there are no error in that code so how do you now check it then you go ahead you come here you copy this what is here again zero slash zero dash is upper so you pick it from here and you come back here and paste paste that so if i hit enter you see exactly what is here exactly what is here all right so if you have that it means that even before pushing you are running your checks locally you are checking if your what you've done is correct before pushing to get up that is basically what they expect you to do to check locally before you push to get up so after you've done that you can come go ahead you can either push or push everything later you can push one file at a time all right you could go ahead and do git add You do git add dot you hit enter i push this already you do git commit minus n your commit message um sometimes you could just choose to use your file here okay Like I said earlier, you can push everything at the end, or you can push individual files. Okay, so you hit enter because you are pushing just this file. Then you go ahead and do your git what? Git push. Okay, you go ahead and do your git what? Git push. So you hit enter. After you've done that, then you can come back and run your check. But this, doing this, testing with this file has already prepped us into what we are supposed to have what the output will likely be all right but again we ultimately run our check to confirm that what we've done is correct so you see this is correct so please kindly follow through follow this video so that we do this together once and for all so that your you learn you learn and get you know explanation as well get your code or check so you let me clear here the commit message before we move to the next one here the next one is uh, is digit write a, a function that checks for a digit zero through nine write a function that checks for a digit zero through nine here's the prototype return one if c is a digit zero if otherwise then this part like I said earlier, this test is the test file. So we are going to go ahead and create our file. You come down, you pick the file name. Pick the file name. You do vi. Paste. 
paste that and you hit enter you're going to take you to vi then once you are there you hit i you tap i insert to start writing into vi like i've been explaining this part is your function the header the header file the header part function header then this is the function documentation this is the documentation which must follow betty style again again go ahead and make changes to this file all right go ahead and make changes you change function to fox or remove function check for digit remove true just to make changes to this part all right just to make some changes okay so once you're done um this is what the function definition and declaration part okay the function name is this underscore is digit and this function is going to return an integer data type and this is the argument we have one argument pass into this function okay one argument and that is c which is returning again an integer data, data type then we do return we do return c is equal to, is uh, greater than or equal to zero and c is less than or equal to nine okay that is it so that is to check for function that checks for a digit zero through nine checks for a digit zero through nine so you do that you make your own little adjustment here here and after that you can go ahead and do your escape colon wq you save and quit then you hit the return key then you can of course do your checks you can check uh, locally if what you have is correct so how do you do that like i, I explained earlier okay this is the last time i'll do this you can check i've shown you this part like i explained initially it's your test you use it to test to test your file if what you have done locally on the terminal you test before pushing to github if it is correct for that part so i'll just test and how do i do that i'll do vi this one main dot c which is a test file is that even if you don't push it that does not uh, it, uh, it's just to test if you are correct all right so what do you exactly like i said earlier this is what we have there what is here exactly you put that into there all right that is exactly if you look it's exactly what you have so once you have done that you do your escape colon w q you save and quit so after doing that then you can now do this run your gcc to check to create your executable file so if you hit enter if your code is wrong it's going to show an error if it is correct it's going to return this without any error so after returning that you pick this from here again you pick this and you come here and put it to sh to output to display um what you have the result if i hit enter you see this is exactly the same thing that means i've drawn my chest locally and at least to an extent i'm quite sure that what i'm doing is correct except the only point it will be except if my documentation did not follow betty then or uh, all my the checks if i run the checks later so maybe one we we fail then i can go and adjust it so this already give you an insight about what your code how they will run so once you've done that you can come back and do your git add dot you hit enter then you do your git commit i'm not pushing again i put this code already do your git commit your commit message again you could choose to use the file name you 
put that in, you close that, you hit enter, then you do your git push. Git push. Okay? Git push. So once you hit enter, it's going to push the code to GitHub. So once you've done that, you can come back here and you run your check. So just try and run this. All right, you see. I bet it's correct and I have checked the code partially. Oh, yeah, checked the code earlier and it was correct. And exactly this one confirmed that what we did was correct. So you could go ahead and do the same. If you are confused, please drop your question in the comment section of, the, of this video. All right. And again, you can rewatch if you missed out on any part. So move um, collaboration is multiplication. Write a function that multiplies two integers. Write a function that multiplies two integers. It is the prototype which we have already inside the main.h. Inside the main.h file. So how do we go about this? We go ahead and copy the file name. Then we'll come here and do vi. Put in the file name. If I hit enter, it's going to take us here. Okay, like I've been explaining earlier, this is what you have here. How did we come about? If you're looking at the prototype again, in the prototype, the argument to the function, there are two arguments this time int a and int b. So if you look here, that's exactly what we have. All right. So this is our function documentation which of course we follow betty okay this we follow betty betty style so you could make changes here you could change uh, a this variable to var and leave this one always return zero so you could make those little adjustments in your own file while creating your own file so that it will be unique to you it will not be like other people's file you should you uh, not be good if you are the check if you they detect plagiarism in your code so this is it then this is the make function like i'll be explaining function de definition declaration so we are the, the function name is small mul and it's returning an integer data type and we have an argument two arguments to this function a and b to re both return the integer value so then we declared a we declare uh, we declare the variable called mol then we come here with the mol equals a times b they return mol so that is basically what we have here trying to dig in so that you understand what we have and you will know how to create your own file okay you know how to create your own file so once you've done that you can do your escape with your this column w to, to save and keep then on your own you could go ahead i've shown you time and again i've showed you twice now how to test locally so you could pick this two main dot C, you do VI two main dot C, you hit enter, you take it to VI, then you pick this test uh, file, the code here to test, copy it up to this point, up to this point, you paste it, then you do your GCC to test. I've shown that um, before now. So here, once you've done, you can do your git add after you've tested. And you confirm that okay gave you this and you're checking that okay to understand that your code is correct you could do your git add you hit enter then you could do your git commit minus n you put in your commit message then you could use the file name here of course to mod c to 
we could use this as your commit message so you could hit enter then you do git push git push we are trying to push individual file but you could do it help you monitor progress that if you have problem in any file you can quickly fix it before moving to the other one but if not um, you can as well work on all the files and push at once okay you can as well do that it's just the same step you create all the files you work on them individually and push all at once then you put, do your git what git push so at the end you can come back here and do your check check your code And come back and check your code if you are correct all right so this is it again please check correctly please check correctly so go ahead and close this and looking at the next tag the number speaks for themselves write a function that prints the numbers from zero to nine followed by a new line okay so function that prints that followed by a new line so you come here and do your your vi pick the file name go ahead and pick your file name all right vi the file name so if you come here we have that file of created already so you can go ahead and create that if you haven't just do vi and define name so we are trying to write the function that prints the numbers from 0 to 9 followed by a new line again again this is the the header file oh sorry this is the function header and in the header we are including the main.h and in the main.h file we created earlier, the second file, we have the prototype for this particular file inside that file. So this file we just we are including, we are including main.h. So that main.h, uh, this file will read, we pick up the prototype from the main.h file. Then we have our documentation function, documentation here. And of course, like I've been saying, this follow better style and this is the print function print number this is don't you don't have to change this you don't have to change it then but for what is here this statement you can make adjustment to it and let it be your make it unique like we say make function checks or checks for okay we will have two checks here checks for a digit all right remove the zero through nine just make it unique to yourself so once you've done that return always zero you could say return zero return always return zero and just make it unique then this is the function declare the function name the function name is print numbers right then we have is the function is returning a void dot data type void that means it's returning nothing that's the meaning of void returning void data type and the, we have no argument to this function again let me illustrate this that this argument this um this argument of function path if we are not returning any argument you could write you could write void into it that would be correct again you could also do empty Curly braces with nothing inside that also shows that you are you are not returning any you are not including any argument all right in the function you are not adding any argument in this function in the function so these two are correct there are two ways to do that okay so again here we are did they ask us to use any particular alphabet okay they did ask us to use any particular alphabet as our variable so we choose our variable name ourselves so you can go ahead and choose your variable name yourself i used int c here you can use int a you can use it's b to 
just I use in C here. You can choose any variable name you want to use, preferably an alphabet. All right. So I use C here to return integer data type and use the for loop here. And we said as long as C is equal to okay, we initialize C to be 48. As long as C is less than 58, less than 58, that's between 48 and 57. That's the meaning that C plus plus will put you. Okay, the expected year. You can only use put you twice in your code. So they want us to use the put you function, then put you C, then put you new line. So basically, this is what you have here. This is what you have in your following. Then I believe I can understand this. this is not um, rocket science, it's understandable. Uh, after doing that, you can do your escape. Colon WQ okay. Colon WQ we save and quit then we hit I hit enter then we take us to bring us out of VI to our terminal then we say you again you could check I've told, showed you how to run the checks if you are correct. So once you have done, you could do your git add, git commit, and git push to push it to GitHub. Said I put this earlier. Then once you're done with that, you can go ahead and check your code. So I'm running these checks, and of course, yes, just showed, and everything is checked correctly. Everything is checked correctly. So I'll go ahead and close this while we look at. The next one, I believe in numbers and signs. Write a function that prints the numbers from zero, from zero to nine, followed by a new line. Okay, followed by a new line. This is the prototype, of course, which we have included in our main.h file. Then do not print two and four. Okay, we are not printing to a four, we are printing from zero to nine. You can only use underscore put chart twice in your code. So let's just go ahead and see what we, we can do. Take this from here. Go ahead and do VI. File name. So it takes me into the VI, into VI. Then I've explained all of this from header to function doc the documentation which we follow Betty style. Then this is our function, our function definition. Then we have the, the function name which is print most number. This is the function name, and the function is return returning a void data type, and there are no arguments. There are no argument passed into this function. Okay, there are no argument passed into the function. So we look at this and so after you have done that. Then you discover that this is returning a void data. This the is returning a void data type, and we are not passing any argument into this function. So here, are we supposed did they give us a particular number to to use for our? No, they didn't. So here, we are initial. We are declaring a variable. So you could choose any variable name you want to use. Right, you could choose any variable name you want to use. I use um C here. You could choose A, B, or any alphabet of your choice, and you are going to use that throughout the program. You are going to use that throughout the program. So this is what we have. We use a for loop and we use two if statements here. Use two if statement again. This is not the you could use a while loop, all right, to execute this program. To use a while loop to execute this program but here we use a, a for loop and we use we have this 
uh, if statement to connote this all right why did we have why are we using 48 and 58 58 c equals to 48 c less than 58 that's 57 i you remember i talked about ANSI values right ANSI values the other time so here it's more like we are using we are using um those values okay if this is ASCII values then this become our normal value so we are interchanging them that is what we did in this program let me show you that again like I, so the ANSI value of the digit zero is 48 so instead of using for zero here we use 48 so you could decide to use zero all right you could decide to do that then you see the ANSI values see the last one 57 is 9 all right so which coronates which is the same thing as we have here 0 to 9 and do not print 2 and 4 so the ANSI value of that will be what 50 and this for 2 52 is for 4 I don't know if you understand that so that is what we did here so you can at the end we now did pucha we are putting the character C and pucha new line new line so that is exactly what we did here so once you are done you could do your escape then colon wq save and quit hit enter is going to do that so that is it then again you could test if it's correct i've showed that a couple of times in this video you could test your program to check and if you get this as your result i've done that i've done my check you could check that for yourself once you've done you could push to get up then you come here and check your code all right you can see this checks correctly it check correctly so the for the next one they said numbers constitute the only universal language write a function that prints 10 times the numbers from 0 to 14 followed by a new line write a function that prints 10 times the numbers from 0 to 14 followed by a new line this is the prototype of course we've included this in the main.h file you could only use put chart three times in your code this is for test this for the test this will test your what you have okay this will test all right so you see the result is pretty 10 times so let's go ahead and pick up the file name from here let's go ahead and pick pick this so if we come here do vi put in the file name then if I hit enter, it takes us here, and this is what you have. Explain this part kindly of times your header and your document, your tile, your documentation, function documentation. Then this is the main program, and our program name is what? Of course, you guess rightly, our program name is more numbers. What is it returning? It's returning a void data type. We have our parameter, our argument, this uh, bracket. Do we have parameter in the argument? No, it's a void. Uh, we have void it's returning no argument like i said you could do your bracket open and close without putting anything that would also be correct did they tell us to use any variable any particular variable no so we chose uh, the variable we are to use so you can choose yours we initialize we declare two variable here a i and j all right on separate lines on separate lines you can go ahead and do yours Sorry, on the same line. You can go, go ahead and do yours on separate line. Let me show you an example. You can come and do int i. Or you could use any 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 uh, alphabet. You go to the next line, int j. This is also correct. All right. Put your semicolon. This is also correct. But we did that on the same line. Economica, yeah, that's, that's a for we use the for loop for i again. You can use your while loop, you can use your do while loop for i is equal to initialize i to be zero. 
long as i is less than 10 i plus plus will increment i so again for j we did the same thing for j as long as j is less than 15 this time j plus plus then if j is exactly 10 if j is exactly 10 then which are j divide 10 plus 0 all right we are trying to get this i don't know if you get trying to get all of this then put ya again j modular 10 this is modular okay we say j the value of j if i is zero the first value is zero then zero divide 10 that will be zero right plus zero it will give us this first zero okay, the following then the next one here put ya j modular 10 what is the initial value of j zero then for that zero modular 10 that's zero remember remember zero plus zero is zero for the first of course for the first one all right then for the next one for i for the next one for i okay for the, uh, for this sorry the, uh, for this j uh, if the next number is 1, j divide 1 divide 10, right? 1 divide 10. That's 0, right? Plus 0. So whatever you get. And again, if you want to check for the, for the 1 for this, you do j modular 10. The remainder, right? That's 1 plus 0. That's 1. All right, so that's how it will integrate through this loop. All right, until we have all of these numbers, we're going to repeat them 10 times. 10 times. So once you are done putting in this code, of course, you can make modifications here. Once you are done putting in that, you could do your escape. Do your escape. Colon. Do your escape colon wq you save and quit then you exit here editor you come back here again like you have said you could run your you could use your test file create your test file using this name then you create it put in this code in your test file that's zero five main dot c put in this code exit run the gcc code once you are done then you will come here and put dot uh, slash five more numbers and it's going to display all of this exactly like then once you are done you could do your git add git commit and you push to git up once you are done that then you come back here to check your code so see it checked correctly because i have run that checked and you could go ahead and do the same to go ahead and do the same so looking at the next one looking at the next one said write a function that draws a straight line in the terminal okay this is just to draw a straight line and we have the prototype given then you can use picture function to print where n is the number of times then the character d should be printed the line should end with a new slash new line the n is zero or less the function will only print new line so this is it and we could go ahead and pick up the file name like we have done this is the test file we could go ahead and pick up this file name and we do vi i'll fill the file name here and I hit enter is going to take me here of course this are uh, this is the header and the documentation which is very compliant then we have the main function here so the main function is returning a void data type and we have one parameter one argument passed into the function which is in which is n which is returning an integer data type take note that they specifically say that you should use n 
so that is why we are doing that so n that is why we use this n so you must use that n because you were told to use it so once you've done that you have this statement if n is less than zero then put your n here so s int i we declared another variable which is we was not said okay you could change i to a on your path you could change i to a b or whatever uh, alphabet apart from n that you've declared already so for i equal to one i less or equals to n i plus plus then you could do put this and this we are trying to what we are trying to achieve is this This is what we are trying to add. This will be our output at the end of the day. So once you have done that, you could do your escape. Colon so WQ. And if I hit enter, it will not bring me out. So I could go ahead and check. Like I've said earlier, with your code, with your test file. This is the test file. Go past testing purpose and once you have done that, then you can come back here and do your git add dot enter, you hit enter, do your git commit. Commit message, of course, you use the file name. You hit enter, then you can do your git push. hit enter so it's going to push it to github and at the end of the day you come back and run your check so let's check let's check this so you see it's all correct please drop your question if you have any and if you are confused you can replay the video to ensure that you follow closely and write your unique code so i feel like i'm the diagonally packed in the parallel universe to write a function that draws a diagonal line on the terminal something like this yeah something like this that draws something like this on the terminal so that is what we are about to do now so they gave us this prototype which we have included in the main.h file and have that already then you could only use put your function to print where n that means you cannot use print with printer you can only use put your where n is the number of times the character slash will be printed the diagonal should end with a new line if n is less is, is n is zero or less the function should only print slash n so again we do we have we pick the file name and start working on it so if i come here i'll pick this up and now I'll, I'll paste i'll paste that if i hit enter it takes me into vi and this is what we have of course i've explained this as the other this is the documentation part you see the best then this is the main program this part is the main program which ends here and the function name is print diagonal the function is returning a void returning a void data type and we have just one argument to the function then we use an if statement if n is less than equal to zero put char n like the instruction they gave here instruction they gave here okay we are trying to follow that then s int we now declare two other variables i and j you could declare yours since they specifically told us it is only n that they ask us to use specifically ask us to use here so you could change my i to your a and j to b or m and n uh, t and arrow whatever you choose to use is fine so for i equals zero i less than n i plus plus so we are comparing i and n so if i initialize it to zero i less than n then we increment i i plus plus and for j we 
we are comparing J to N. So we're comparing I and J to N. Alright, if J is exactly I put char slash slash. So you remember where that where N is the number of times the character slash should be printed. Okay, so that is it. So if J is exactly I double slash S as if J is less than I put a space put a space okay you put a space so that is what we have here then print all of this in a new line and that is it so that is exactly what we have here so at the end of the day you could go ahead and after putting in and writing yours of course change your delete your comment the function put this draw remove s and make it unique to yourself and yeah in these two make it unique to yourself you cannot just don't just people this here so that you won't be plagiarized so once you are done with that you can do your escape shift colon wq you save and quit then again if you want to run your checks before pushing of course you should do that all right you do that run your checks before pushing okay so you could i've showed you times without number how you can run your checks i believe you understand that you can implement that here by running them so once you are done then you could do your git add git commit and git push to push your code and once you have done that then you can come back and check so let's check together of course this is rightly correct so you could have the same just follow through and we move to the next task so i close this up and next one say you have so much sunshine in every square inch write a function that prints a square followed by a new line write a function that prints a square followed by a new line this is our prototype and you're only allowed to use the future function you cannot use printf and others where size is the size of the square if size is zero or less so they gave you um, the what you are bound by the rules. So you we go ahead and pick up the file name, and I'll come here and do vi. So I'll paste the file name. If the enter is going to bring me here, of course this is the function documentation. This is very compliant. This is the we included the main dot h. A header file okay, including that then we have the function definition this is the function um, name print square and it's returning a void data type and we have some uh, one argument here which is size which is returning an integer then we have our uh, int we declare to in, uh, variables x and y of course you could choose your own variable you must be used what is here since yeah you could decide to choose that the only thing that is cost that they ask us to use here is size that's constant which is part of our function here all right our argument so we will choose x to be a y b or c d and whatever if size is less than one then put a slash that so and while y is less than size x goes to zero y s is less than size which are hash so you know we correlate with what we are trying to print with that uh, that square all right we are using this hash symbol to print that then s plus plus it checks this loop as long as s is less than size it keep printing this hash this hash sign and at the end if it is equal to that or equal greater than then we end the program put child in a new line then y plus plus then program to terminate so let's escape colon wq to save and quit and come back and check to see what we have 
this is your test file you can run your test file and i've showed you countless of times how you can do that and if the result is this that means you are your way to getting all green so once you've done that you could come here and do git add git commit and git push and after that you could come back and check so i'll run this check let's run it together all right so it checked correctly check correctly check correctly all right so yeah that is it so let's see what we have let's see what is left for us please boost the test of an interview question to help it out and now program me job candidate who can't seem to program their own way out of wet paper bag write a program that prints the number from one to hundred followed by a new line but for multiples of the theory print piece instead of the number and instead of the number and for the multiples of five uh, print boost for the number which are multiplied of multiples of both three and five so that is what you want to do you see this is supposed to be what our output should look like all right this is what our output should look like and again we have the file name here so i'll pick this up pick this up and i'll come here and do bi i'm putting the file name so if we go into here you see um we have our this our main we are including a, a standard input output h file okay then we have our documentation we have our documentation all right we have our documentation you could go ahead and make it suit to your purpose we are using uh, we are not including std uh, uh, main.h here we are using standard h why because of in case we use a function did we did we use a function here okay i'm not seeing any let me see All right, we use printf. We use printf. We use printf function because we use printf function. That is why we included we included this um, standard input output dot h. All right, because we use the printf function. This um, standard input output dot h is the standard controls the standard input header file input and output header file. Uh, file. So uh, control the standard input and output function of which printf is part of them. All right, printf is part of them. So since we use that, we include in that, and of course this is going to control. This is the function, and the name of our function is what is main, which is returning an integer data type, and there are no arguments passed into the function. We declare a variable norm, and we use the for loop for norm one. And as long as norm is less than equal to 100, that's one between one and 100, then norm plus plus, okay? So if norm modular theory, that's the remainder, this, this modular the remainder, when you divide norm by three, the remainder is exactly zero, and norm modular five is exactly zero. Printf is boost. And again, if, as if norm modular theory is exactly zero, printf feeds, and as as if norm modular 5 is at least a printf boost. As printf, let's say the norm, the value of norm, and if norm is exactly 100, if norm is exactly 100, then we continue printf, give a space, give a space, then printf new line, return zero, and this return shows that our program have executed successfully so if you look again see sometimes they print one they fish pulls fees and pulls and again they print numbers all right give a space while printing so all of these we control that give us this have explained 
in the main program so that is that uh, please if you have specific question you can drop it in the comment of this video so that i explain further so all right you could after doing that you do your escape column wq you save and quit and get out of here then you could do your test you could do your check let's test for this okay for this we are not creating a, a specific a file to test so we, we could just go ahead and do your gcc to do your gcc so i'll come back here and i'll put that copy that gcc file i'll paste it here so if i hit enter let's see what we have all right it runs successfully without any error so to display what we have in that executable file which you have created with that gcc code you copy one dot slash knifeys underscore boot so i'll put it here put it here and if i hit enter you see yeah that gave us the output that gave us the output so i just decided to check this so that you understand um you see the result yourself you see the result yourself so after that you could do your do your git add so that you push this file git add git commit and all of that so once you are done with that you do your git push and you come back and check check your code so check in see it's all checked correctly all checked correct so i'll close this and let's see what we have next triangle write a function that print a triangle followed by a new line and um yeah we do this fine okay we have three more to go so this triangle i'll just go ahead and show you what we have i'll show you what we have so this is the file this is the file So this is what we have. We just go ahead and look through. Time again. Time again is a fast friend. So go ahead and look through what we have. All right. And we could change the the the, the documentation here. Form function, draw all remove it entirely, print, print, and triangle, remove, just make it unique to yourself. All right, make it unique so that you'll be flagged and you go ahead and do all of that. Let me expand it back. So you go ahead and do all of that. So once you are done, you could exit, you escape, colon, WQ, and you come back to your terminal and you can do your check if you want to, but this is okay this is what you do you create your 10 main to see to do your test and once you check you display exactly this exactly these two on um, this thing you have here so you can go ahead and do git add git commit and do your git push so once you are done again you can come back and check your code so I'll just be running this so you see our checks are correct and you get the same thing just follow properly and ask questions where necessary so for the next one right the prime factors of one two three four one are this and this write a program that finds and print the largest prime factor of the number this followed by a new line followed by a new line so that is exactly what we are going to be doing the second to last task so i'll go ahead and piece, pick the the file name so come here let me clear here a bit 
we do vi and this define name here is enter so you have to this like I said we are including we are not including the main dot h we are including the standard input output dot because we are using the printf function here all right the standard header file for you know that if you, before you use the printf function you have to include that not just printf for other function all right it controls this all right that is why we are including the standard input output dot h this is the function documentation okay so you adjust this make adjustment here to suit but leave this main leave this return don't touch that adjust this other part to just make it unique to yourself so what we are trying to do we're trying to print the largest prime factor of the number that so this our main function long prime oh this is we are declaring this variable called prime and we are the return data type is long and we initialize the value we gave it a value this all right gave it a value d and at the same time we are initializing this uh, variable div divisor so why the divisor is less than prime divide 2 if prime modular 2 is exactly 0 prime prime equal prime divides equal it's equals to 2 continue for divisor divisor theory and divisor less than prime uh, divide 2 divisor uh, divisor plus divisor equal 2 then if prime modular divisor is exactly 0 uh, prime prime equal prime uh, prime Div, uh, prime equal divisor then print f this prime returns zero uh, it's a little tricky it's a little tricky on this part so but you could look through this all right you could look through this this part of the advanced task if you have other questions you could drop them for virtual areas that are not clear all right are not clear so this is what we have and at the end of the day let me make it little smaller so that you can pick that up okay yes this is what we have here all right you could look through that you could look through that so at the end if you have that do your escape colon wq save and quit hit enter so after doing that okay there are no test files here there are no test files you didn't drop any test files so you can go ahead and do your git add dot git commit and your commit message and you push i push this already like i said earlier so after doing all of that you can come back and check if what you did was correct so run this check so as you can see this is done correctly this part of the advanced task and it has been done correctly so that is that i'll close this and finally Finally, guys, we move to the last task. All right. So you have been waiting to get to the last. So we move to the last, the very last task for this project. Numbers have life. They are not just symbols on paper. Write a function that prints an integer. All right. There are specific things you have to keep in mind. This is the prototype, and you can only use on that for future function to print. You are not allowed to use long. You are not allowed to use arrays or pointers. You are not allowed to had code special values okay so they they gave they gave us uh, the test file here but first we go ahead and pick this up by name and do bi i'll paste that so if i hit enter it's going to take me here and again i have my header file we are including main.h again this time then we have function documentation this is our function definition then we have the function name print underscore numbers which is, is returning a void data type 
then this is an argument with the function. We have one argument with this function. Then we have, uh, let me see, let me show you something. Okay. Yes, this is the prototype. And there we are supposed to use n, which prefers us to use. Then we declared norm. We declared norm. You can change norm actually to whatever you want. All right, you can change norm, but you can't change n because it's part of the prototype. So you change norm to any value. Then if n is less than zero, future dash, future dash, then norm equals to negative norm. All right. Then if bracket over norm divide ten is greater than zero, print under the numbers norm divide ten. Then put at this norm modular 10 i believe you know the difference between divide and modular divide is returning the divisor value while modular is returning the remainder so norm modular 10 plus zero so it's going to put that it's going to put that you know put that, that so once you have done you make changes make this unique make this unique so you do your escape column wq save and quit so after that again you could run your checks you could run your checks and create this file vi this file run your check copy that uh, this file here up to this point up to this point do vi 0101 main dot c copy this put that and uh, do your gcc and it's going to display this going to display this if that was done correctly so you could go ahead and do your git add git commit and git push and push it to git up and after that you could go ahead and run your checks all right so let's check this together see it's all checked correctly it's all checked correctly because it was you know meticulously done i believe that if you are followed through you not just have your checks done which is also okay but you gain basic understanding about the project um there are further things to learn like i've said earlier the resources are there you could go through again different ways to learn not just what you've done now um you could drop your question in the comment of this video you could use the resources they provided you could ask other uh, other of your pairs to learn better the most important thing is that you are learning and you are growing you are programming on the daily you are picking something uh even if you are not picking everything you can't pick everything at the same time just keep picking one tea at a time and learn it to the end so thank you so much for watching to the end and i believe you gained value if you did that please comment in the section to encourage us and thank you so much and i'll see you in the next video